class. We can tell the room number 10. We are at the middle transit dungeon. Nobody slept here. It's a passing place. You have this description here. Slim exit to waiting boat. We wonder why you step here. There is a waiting boat for you. George's Castle with the popular name Elmina Castle because it is located in Elmina. Now, in the year 1482, the Portuguese built it, but the thing is, as far back as 1471, the Portuguese started arriving here. When they came, they were trading with our lookouts, and that was the barter trade. That was exchanging goods for goods. The Portuguese over here were given the lookouts guns, gunpowder, tobacco, liquor, and other materials. And our lookouts here will exchange them with gold, ivories, and other precious items. In fact, the gold was so much, and this gave the Portuguese a mindset that this whole land we have here is in abundance of gold. So they named the area Al Mina, and that means the gold mine. But this was corrupted or mispronounced to be El Mina, and that has come to stay. Uh, Edena is another name for the town, but that is also a Portuguese word. The actual word is Aldea, and that means village in Portuguese language. This was also corrupted to be Edena and that has also come to stay. But that should not tell us that Elmina never had a name at all before the Portuguese got here. Elmina's traditional name or first name is Anomansa. And I want us to pronounce it Anomansa. Aha, uh -huh. it's a Ghanaian word. That means Isua Enuma Onsa. Isua Enuma Onsa, inexhaustible water. Or the more you drink, more is coming up. Now, this water we are talking about, it is the lagoon just below the main bridge over there where we have the boats and the canoes. That is the history behind it. Enuma Onsa. Now, in the course of the barter trade, there was that need for the Portuguese to have a permanent place to keep their goods. So, their leader by name Captain Don Diego de Zambuja. He contacted our king, Nana Kwamina and Sada I, and he gave them that permission to build this castle in 1482. In those times, all these rooms we have down here were warehouses. In these warehouses, they kept their incoming goods, like the clothes, the mirror, the schnapps, and the outgoing ones, like the gold and ivories. However, around the year 1503, that was in the early 16th century. When the slave trade started, all these warehouses we have down here were now converted to the slave dungeons. That's where they kept the enslaved Africans. And at a point in time, there were 1,000 captives, 600 men and 400 women minimum every three months. Briefly, I want us to have a look into how they got most of the captives into the dungeons. Now, the Europeans captured some of them on their own, and that was false capture. 
For example, you may send your daughter to buy you something on the street. By the time you read that, she has been stolen and you have no idea where your daughter is. Now, some of the Europeans also had a collaboration or a link with some of the Africans. These guys were slave raiders. Now, that's what they do. Sometimes they can get to some village somewhere and set the village on fire with guns, cutlasses, and other dangerous weapons. They leave people ambush. Spark who are running for their lives, they capture them, especially the women and the children. But you see, if we are to know of the largest way by which they had a lot of them in here, then that was through the effects of inter-tribal wars. Right now in Ghana, there are many tribes, but no matter our differences, we all see ourselves as one people. But in those times, that was not so, because usually there were wars among the tribes. Now, for example, if tribe A defeats tribe B, most of the tribe B were captured. And most of these people who were brought here, they were victims of wars. Victims of wars. Now, there were also cases of deception or tricks. For example, a ship captain can tell a chief that we are having some party on the ship. So he, the chief, should bring some of his people to the palace. Let's enjoy ourselves on the ship. After the party, get back to your palace. Now the chief brings them and they get them heavily drunk and they sell them away. Deception. That is what happened. Now, around the year 1637, the Dutch fought the Portuguese in their castle, defeated them, and they took over their castle in 1637. And in the year 1872, the Dutch sold the castle to the British. That were no fight. Now, the Portuguese, they lived in this castle for 155 years. The Dutch lived here for 235 years, and the British were here for 85 years until the year 1957 when Ghana had their independence. As we stand right now, Elmina Castle, this is the oldest and the largest European building in the whole world when we talk about the slave trade. Right now, Elmina Castle is 539 years old and we are still counting. So this is a brief history about Elmina Castle. Mm. Now, initially all these rooms down here were warehouses, but when the slave trade started, this is where they put the, the enslaved African women. We are the female slave dungeons. Now, please, these clothes and chains we have here, on July 2016, an exhibition was held in this castle with the title The Return of the Slaves. About 60 people from Ghana, Nigeria, UK, USA, DR, Congo, they came and slept here for 12 hours. From 6 in the evening to the following morning, they used the clothes to cover their waist and the chains for their arms and feet. And in fact, people from many countries, they came down here to observe it. 12 hours in the slave dungeon, the return of the slaves. However, all of these materials we have here, they are not original, just for the exhibition, 2016. Mm. And during the program, they put, they put kerosene in this and let match for lights. However, during the slave trade time, some of the captives, they were partially blind because almost every time they were living in darkness. Mm. There are some metals over here. Now, these are the original iron bars. At first, these iron bars were all here. And because of the rust, most of them are destroyed. So they have replaced them with these wooden bars. But these are the original iron bars. Please, let's come in here. Can I? Yes, you can. Yeah. yeah.
what we have. This female dungeon took the largest number of female captives here. Almost 150 women were lying on this floor. In those times, there were two receptacles of containers. One put over there and another kept over there at the corner. What happens is, if you want to go to the toilet, you get up and you visit. You want to vomit or urinate. You use those containers over there. But the challenge was, when we look at the health problems, it was also bad. Some of them were very weak and could not get up from where they were to visit those two containers to ease themselves. So right now, the weak ones, they were practically going to toilet on this floor. Related to the blood vomiting on the floor. When they have their lenses, they have all their menstrual blood scattered all over the floor, mixed up with the toilet, vomit, and everything. And they were still sleeping in there. In fact, we can never imagine at all that kind of heat and the bad smell that was coming from the whole sleep dungeon. And what I normally see is uh, now, very few in house, if you don't clean the place for three days, on your fourth time, you cannot stand the smell. Now, come to imagine toilet, urine, vomit, menstrual blood, all mixed up together with human beings sleeping in them. That was very, very terrible. Please, let's come here. Is this the floor? original floor? So, yes. so, the only difference is all these segment rooms are original. The only difference is the cement fillings. At first, they were not there. Okay. Hmm. Please, this hole we have, that was one of their sources of air. But the problem was this hole was connected to this room, magazine. They kept gunpowder and gun tea. So anytime there was a leakage, all the gunpowder, Dr. Hughes, would rush in here and pollute the air. Already they were sleeping their mess. And the toxic fumes coming in, it made it worse. Some died, they pick your body up and dump you into the sea. So of those rich on flowers, sometimes when visitors come, they bring them along to pay respect to those who are gone. Hmm. Please let somebody have a question. So you said this was the only source of um, this was one of one of the sources yes, of air. Yeah. Was this uh, it, it was just like that. Yeah. But the only difference is back then they were iron bars, but right now they are wooden bars. But air came from here, the other side. But the middle one here there was a gate closing this area. Mm -hmm. Now the captives stayed here for almost three months. Now the normal command is Normally they spent three months here before they were taken away. Yeah, when it comes to feeding, yeah, they were given food to eat sometimes once or twice in a day. But the issue was some of the captives they just wanted to die and just leave the system. So some refused to eat. And on the ships, there was this uh, mouth opener for false feeding. Speculum and I'll show you. They fix in your mouth, skew with your mouth opens, and they give you a frog by horse. I'll show you the picture of that mouth open and before we leave the castle. Hmm. And let's see what I've been outside this I have a yes, Sorry. my sister. How did they um document keep track of the slaves by name, by number? How how did they keep track of the people here after they caught them? Yeah, that is an excellent question. Uh, what I normally say with our is more with aura pass from one generation to another. That's how we get most of our information. So in terms of documentation, it's a little bit, it's a little bit challenge. Yeah, that's what I would say. For most of them all around, from one generation to pass on to another. Yeah, and that, that normally goes. Okay. Um, let's come here. Hey, do you see that black pipe over there? Black pipe, mm -hmm. yeah. we have another pipe here. When the Portuguese were here, they would connect them around the castle in a way that anything is really. We want to extract the water reservoir. 
what we see here is a snot connected to the sea. Mm. This is harvested rainwater. Mm. Mm. Now, I was saying that in the year 1637, the Dutch fought the Portuguese here and they took over. When the Dutch came here, they thought that the Portuguese have poisoned this water. Yeah, the Dutch never used it. Yeah, they built their home. So, and I'll show you. It's just underground, the museum. All underground is that water where you went in. Hmm. The soldiers who were here, the traders and the governors, they were raping the women because back then they don't come with their own wives. For this castle, if a governor was to rape a woman with his beer or wine, we we'll come and stay up here. Let's have a look there. That was the governor's bar. He stays up there and issues all this to the soldiers to start opening all the people. Now, the women to come and line up here. So while they were here, the he being up there will now look for and choose the woman he wanted to rape. Sorry, but some of the women who were chosen were menstruating, but still that's what the governor yeah. wanted. They fetch water here and they clean you. They make you eat and they take you to the governor's bedroom. According to the history, only the men that are not the governor. So the It's a trap door. They pull it up, the woman walks up, enters the bedroom, and they close it. As we all go up, I will show you the secret door. After ripping them, they break all of them back into the dungeon still as captives. In fact, because of the rape cases, some of the women they got pregnant and their situation they could not live in the dungeons. One thing was the European traders who were here. Some of them built stone houses outside the castle where they send these pregnant women to, to give birth. Now as they give birth and the child was four years, they bring the children back to the castle where they educate them. But in Ghana here most of our formal education started with the castle schools before they were moved outside. And apart from that, in Africa here sometimes you will see some of our brothers and sisters if you look at the skin color, it's very light. That's a light colored skin. And apart from this, there are some European names on the coastland. You may hear a name like De here. There is Van Dyke, Van der Poel, Da Costa, Da Silva. There is Vroom, Viera. We have Wilberforce, Peterson, Hutchison, Johnson, Anderson. Blanson, Robertson, Fries, and in fact, all the other things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just a few months ago, I heard of another name, Appleton. Yeah, and I learned that it's in Jamaica. But you see, it was not all the female captives who were selected here who moved up to the bedroom. Some of them, no matter what you do, she will not go up. And they were punished for disobeying the governor. Let's see what happened to them. <coughs> They were chains here. These chains were fixed at the feet of the women, so they didn't go up. When you are here, no water to drink, no food to eat, rain or shine, day or night. You are here in chains. And this treatment was given to them so that the other women inside, as they see that they become afraid and never to disobey the government. This cannonball we have. It weighs 25 kilograms and it cannot run away. That was the punishment for the women.
mean all the men you can see in African men, this was the past. You can tell the room to return. We are at the main transit dungeon. Nobody slept here. It's a passing place. You have this description here. Slain, exit to waiting boat. Meaning, whenever you step here, there is a waiting boat for you. Hmm. Please go to the phone touch light as we enter here. One step down. Okay, so are this written is original or no, it has been, it's not original, okay. but I put them to show yeah, right. where the main parts. Please one step down. Please stand here for me and your step. Hmm. And your step. And your step. And your step. Have a quick look here. We have coke, we have water, we have milk, we have schnapps. All the people when they come, they bring fish, bread, banana, and so on. Uh, visitors who come here have different beliefs. Some still have that strong belief, and still the spirits of the ancestors are here, and they can get something to drink or eat. That's why we have these items over here. Uh -huh. Anytime the ships arrive, all the enslaved African men they pass through here. And they enter the room of Newton. Now, this is where the female cat is passed. But at first, this was a staircase. It was steps. Yes. Uh, we are going to see the room of Newton, please. Mind your steps, mind your head, and bend very, very low. Hmm. Let's see. And there was a staircase here. Now, all the captains in chains, as they have me, all the captains in chains will get down to the smaller boat and they are transported to the wharf. I will show you. That was where the bigger, bigger ships were anchoring. They take them there and they arrange them in and they are taken away to places like America and the Caribbean islands like Jamaica and Haiti. Now, as we stand right now, it is throughout this door and other reasons. That explains why we have Africans scattered all around the world. This is one of the reasons. If you look back, these roots, flowers, people bring them to pay respect. Now, we can observe that the side of the door is very small. This should not tell us that some of the captives did not have weight. But because of health challenges in the dungeons, people sleep in their own toilets, many grow slim or lean that they could pass through the door very easily. A room of no return and the door of no return. So in the case of they, you know, uh, coming through this line, was there maybe a slave master or following them? Yes, definitely. Okay, so meaning the slave masters were also, you know. Around. Now, apart from that, when I told you to come, we all came individually, but back then it was not so. Like all of us would be chained to one chain, and can only move as a chain can carry this most of that there. That was that. I'm going to have a quick picture of the door you can, then we walk outside. Please, as you walk out, you mind your head.
General of the Dutch West Indies Company. This man came here on 16 January 1758 and he died on 12 March the same year, only three months, January to March 1758. Governor Tet died at 8:41. Died of malaria. They buried him here. Malaria. But you see, while he was here as a governor, there was a dark priest in this castle by name A. Andres from Fier, a village in Finland, in Holland. He wrote this short tribute for Governor Tet. He was describing Tet as honest and God fearing. And it is only the priest, A. Andres, who can explain to us why this man was God fearing. So we look at the troubles of the captives back in the dungeons. Governor Tet, God fearing. Was it here? Yes, Tess. Okay. Uh, please, these two small sauces we have here, we are going to compare them. Let's enter here. This is the European soldier cell of a stubborn soldiers, some of the castle no permission. Others got so much drunk, they were arrested and brought here for misbehaving. But in this cell, no one died. There was fresh air all over the place. Nobody died here. Mm. Now, we are going to check the other cell too, but don't forget, I'll keep with them for a few seconds before I join you. Let's enter. <laughs> For their freedom, the freedom fighters. Anybody who was brought here died. He did die because of heat and no water, no food. They pick your body up and dump into the sea. Let's walk outside. <laughs> Now, today, as all of you have gotten into your story, so I'm going to tell you how. ships to serve as a ballast. They give the ships extra weight for stability, balance on the sea. But when they come down here, that's what they use to raise out the structure. Now when they are leaving, they take the gold, the captives, and the other precious items as weight for balance. When they are leaving. Now the structure in the center 
is the Portuguese church. The first Roman Catholic church in this country. And you see in the whole world, every chapel has a symbol. There was a Roman Catholic tower on top. When the Dutch came here, they were not Catholics. The Dutch took away the tower and they divided the church into two. They used the upper hall as junior soldiers' mess. Soldiers were drinking and eating up there. And they used the hall below as a marketplace. That was where they were buying and selling the captives. When the British got in here, they converted the two halls to be classrooms for their policemen who were trained in this castle. But right at the museum. Ah, and after that, all you visit the museum. Now, all the rooms are the ground floor now. You can see from the writing, male slave dungeon. All the rooms down here were for the enslaved African men. On this first floor were rooms for soldiers, traders, and missionaries. First floor. The second floor there was for the deputy governor and the last one for governor himself. So in this castle, your position will tell you where you have to stay. The higher you are. You see the structure over there with the wood on top? Yeah, you have the same structure over there. They are watchtowers done by the Dutch. The Dutch put soldiers on top of them to watch over the castle for security. However, when the British got in here, they converted the rooms below them to be prisons. In that prison, they kept a popular Asante king by name Nana Prenda I. And in the other prison, they kept a popular Asante queen mother by name Jaha Asantua. Now, Queen Mother Jaha Asantua, when she was 60 years old, she led a war against the British for the protection of the Asante Kingdom Golden Stone. Now, this Golden Stone is believed to be the soul of the Asante Kingdom. The British wanted to take it away from them, but she stood at that age, 60, and fought them. They arrested her and brought her here for almost a year. Now, all of them were taken into exile in Seychelles oh, Island. Island. But later, Nana Prempo was brought back to Ghana and made a king again. But for Queen Mother Yasantua, she died of old age in Seychelles. Later, her body was brought back to Ghana and buried. So that was Nana Prempe's Hall and Queen Mother Yaya Asantua's Hall. Please, this wall here, that slants with the iron bar on top. They have the same wall there and some of them around the castle. These are supporting walls done by the Dutch to support the walls for strengthening, for reinforcement. And the metals we see on top. In 1948, the British were here. They used this castle as a police training school. Every day, their policemen will run and go up, holding the metal, go up and come down, go up and come down for training of the muzzles. And maybe at the end of the tour, you can also give a try of the exercise. And that will be ladies first. <laughs>
also I will be There's the secret door. Amen. Yeah, so do you see the steps from down? Yeah. yeah. Good. Now let's come in here. So this is where the governor will stand and choose the women. Yeah, you, you. Hello, this is the governor's balcony. Okay. Where we we'll stand to select the women. Yes, he wants her to rip. Alright, let's come in. God in my own spectacle. So I was saying that the sea was close to the castle, but right now it has gone back. Please, look, look at your right. Do you see where we have that black item there? There's a black item over there. Do you all see? In, in front of the sun. Black, black item there. I think you have to shift here. So you can see that black item I'm talking about. You see black, where the, the wood there? Over there. I see it, I see it. Yeah. And our right. Okay. Before the road. Yeah. Okay. You see that? The, the black item. After the stones. After the stones. After the stones. Ah, after we stones, we see said the road, the road. Uh, after the stones, you know they see some black thing in there. Yeah. yeah. That was the the wharf where bigger bigger ships were anchoring. Okay. Door of no return, it just down here. So smaller boats to take the captains from the door of no return here, take them over there. They were already left and taken away. Mm. Cape Coast Castle is at a very thing. The structure at the tip is Cape Coast Castle. Only as there, also you will see Elmina Castle. Yeah. yeah.
with the popular name El Mina Castle. In the year 1482, the Portuguese built it. In the year 1637, the Dutch fought the Portuguese here, defeated them, and they took over the castle. And in the year 1872, the Dutch sold the castle to the British. The Portuguese lived here for 155 years. The Dutch lived here for 235 years. And the British were here for 85 years. Right now, the castle is 539 years old. The story that we did and all the history I told you, it is told to serve as a very big lesson for all of us. All of us here, in our own small way, we have to do the little that we can to protect the rights of our fellow brothers and sisters so that this injustice will not repeat itself, although it is still happening in other forms. But I want to thank you very much for your cooperation. I wish all of you the safest and the most peaceful journey back home. So with this, I end this talk. I am Martin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.